We have a special guest today. Uh, and uh, so that's exciting. New time here for our Friday video update with special guests. Excellent. Yes. Today we have with us Lauren Oates of the Nature Conservancy, and she is one of the members of the Vermont Climate Council. Um, and so this is the council that was created by the passage of the Global Warming Solutions Act, which you all helped us uh, to, to pass. And uh, not only does Lauren sit on the council, but she also is a member of the steering committee, uh, which I think is a great new development in terms of how they're organizing themselves and how they're going to get their work done. And so Lauren, tell us a little bit about what the steering committee has been up to in the, what, two weeks that, that you all have been members of the steering committee? Uh, one week. In fact. One week. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you for having me. This is my probably my earliest Zoom meeting over the course of COVID. So happy to be here, coffee and all. Yes, the steering committee was formed last week. Uh, we were nominated by each of the legislative appointees, two from each bucket. So two from the those appointees by the Senate and two from those of the House. Uh, so there are six of us on there, along with Secretary Moore and Secretary Young. Uh, six of us, we had our first meeting on Monday and our second meeting on Thursday, just yesterday. So it's been a whirlwind of a week, but it feels really good to feel the wheels of this big machine start to turn after a slow start. So you're you're sort of like the executive committee in a way to handling more of the nuts and bolts. Is that my understanding? Yeah, I'm, I'm calling it the administrivia, so to speak, just kind <laughs> of making sure that we're staying on, on course. We're working on the draft process, uh, process roadmap or charter. Uh, we'll be responsible for convening the co-chairs of the respective subcommittees when they get formed and just make sure that there's consistency and collaboration across the full process. Great. And and how many, it's a big council. I forget the exact number, but it's what, 20 some people? 23, um, which at times feels big and at times feels small. Yeah. Uh, definitely a lot smaller than what we saw in Maine, but it feels like a good sized group to actually have a conversation, even if via Zoom. And, and just tell us, there's been some dynamics, right, of, of not everyone is thrilled to be there, let's say, or, or dynamite, you know, really excited about the assignment. That seems to be evolving. Can you just give us, you know, the, the little snapshot of what's been, what, what we've maybe been missing, but just picking up hints of? Yeah, we got off to a bumpy start, certainly. Um, there was funding, as you both know, in the Global Warming Solutions Act to stand up a couple of full-time employees within the Agency of Natural Resources to get this started. And we're finally bringing one of those three on. She officially starts next week. We're really excited to have that new capacity. Uh, the first couple of months were slow. Uh, we now have a facilitator, uh, the Consensus Building Institute, who has helped us with the last couple of meetings. And that's, that's also really helped have a third party come in. They have experience with the Maine Climate Council and, and facilitating those meetings. So it feels like like I said, again, the, the wheels are starting to turn and it, and it feels really good to have some milestones in the near future and some, some milestones actually passed now, finally. Great. So you, um, there were a number of subcommittees that were specified in the legislation that passed and you are now embarking on the process of, of getting council members and non-council members assigned to subcommittees. So tell us a little bit about uh, how that process is going to roll out? What's the time frame? How can people who are passionate and have expertise on climate um, get involved in one of those subcommittees? Yeah, great question. So there were four subcommittees stood up in statute. Let's make sure I can get them right off the top of my head. We have the Rural Resilience and Adaptation Subcommittee, the Just Transition Subcommittee, Cross-Sector Mitigation. They'll be really responsible for the emissions reduction piece of the work and the uh, Agriculture and Ecosystem Subcommittee. Recognizing pretty early on uh, at the request of Julie Moore, Secretary Moore, uh, we are going to form a fifth subcommittee for science and data. And that's going to really be, speaking of the wheels behind the big machine, kind of ground truthing the different um, strategies and actions that each of the subcommittees are coming up with, working on some emissions modeling, hopefully a bit of economic modeling as well. Um, so we kind of decided on an eight to 12 member size for each of these. We're thinking cross-sector mitigation might be a bit bigger given the scope in that subcommittee. Um, and so between eight and 12 makes it a little easier for Zoom meetings or team meetings or however we're going to do this over the course of the next six to 10 months. Um, 
we were asked as council members to create a, an internal uh, survey for us to submit names that we thought would be good subject matter experts uh, or people with significant knowledge in each of those, those five buckets of subcommittees and submit them this week. So between that Monday steering committee meeting that I said, yep, and the Thursday subcommittee or steering committee meeting, um, there was a lot of pushback from many members. We've heard a lot from the public. Uh, how do we get involved if it's just council members? And it felt very who's who uh, mm -hmm. among us. So we were, we talked about it yesterday, the steering committee, there seemed to be general consensus that we should open up that survey and make it more public. So we're going to have a public survey out today. I'm sending the link to you all. So hopefully while I'm talking now, when you all see the audience, there'll be a link for you to attach to. Um, we would love to hear your thoughts, whether you're nominating yourself or another, how you wanna be plugged in. It's really important to remember, it's not just subcommittee opportunities. There are opportunities for subject matter experts, people with knowledge, uh, lived experiences to come in, whether it's at the subcommittee status level or coming into different meetings here and there to provide your thoughts. So there's going to be a robust opportunity for you all. The, like I said, it's gonna go out today. We'll have a week and then the subcommittees with council members only will meet the week of the 15th and start reviewing those names. So we're hoping for a lot of input from you all on that. But there, there's a lot of public opportunity, as you're saying, right? Because there will be kind of a, a, a truly the council goes out to the public, as I understand it later. But but then just like the legislature, if people want to testify, they let us know and we make that happen typically, especially here in the Zoom world. And I'm assuming the council operates sort of similarly, right? Yes, very much so. And I'm really pleased to hear that we're recommending that the Just Transition Subcommittee is going to be responsible for creating a public participation plan. So there will be multiple points across the full 2021 calendar period that we're working on this for public to be engaged regularly. We'll do midday meetings, evening meetings, webinars, different formats to make sure we're reaching as many Vermonters as possible. Fantastic. You mentioned some milestones, Lauren. Can you just help us remember those and, and for the public? Look, um, you know, we didn't just say, <clears throat> hey, get together, figure some stuff out. The legislature operates, uh, you know, tries to create some guideposts. So just help us remember, you know, what what are what are we aiming at in the in the relative short and medium term here? So my mind works backwards, if you're OK with me working backwards from the prize, <laughs> big prize, uh, December 1, 2021. So not that far away now, uh, the council needs to be adopting the climate action plan. So working back from that, October is really when we wanna have a draft ready for that real robust public participation and input and use those next two months to edit it. Working back from there is really majority subcommittee work. So the subcommittees, once we break down and figure out who's going to, to jump in and join that, that big significant effort, they're gonna be working between now when they get set up and largely June, July timeframe to really get those actions um, developed, those strategies considered, uh, and recommending it up to the council. So there's, those are the three kind of, the plans due in December, public participation around the draft plan, October timeframe, everything else before that, subcommittees are meeting regularly, hopefully most likely once a week. It's gonna be a big time commitment. Um, there's a lot to be done. Great. That's super, great. Yeah. And hopefully the vaccine rollout continues. And so the October meetings, maybe it could be in person. Oh, that'd be incredible. <clears throat> Wouldn't that be great? Oh my God. It'd be so much better for public participation too. I never thought I would long to go to a boring public meeting, but this one wouldn't be boring. This would, it's really important. That, that gives me a really good snapshot. Sarah, what, what, what else do you think folks want to know? I think that's a great, um, overview of of what the council is doing i'm really excited that we we were able to to find a little time in your schedule lauren so that you could come and tell us what um what the steering committee structure is like how the subcommittees are going to uh roll out and uh we look forward to checking back in with you maybe later on in the le legislative session to to see how that is all working yeah and i should say um as we drop in the links we're going to be revising the, that Agency of Administration Climate Council page to be more user-friendly. Oh, good. <laughs> Hopefully in the near future going to be a public comment box where people who can't attend these meetings 
in person live can really submit their thoughts. And then as we go, we'll also have some surveys around for just feedback generically from them. So hopefully that will be uh, a more user-friendly website that can have more public engagement. But I'm, I'm really glad that you asked me to come today. I'm happy to be here and provide uh, feedback as we move through this really important process. <laughs> It's amazing to hear. It's like a, it's like a startup business, you know, it's yeah. bumps along the way in the middle of a pandemic, a, a vitally important mission. And, uh, and, and you guys are pulling it off. Thank you very much for the hard work you're putting in. Thank you. Let us know how we can help. I'm sure we will. <laughs> Sarah, I think that does it for us this week, right? Um, that's a wrap. When we come back next week, we'll uh, we'll do a little update on how some of our uh, legislative priorities are coming along, um, and uh, and then you know over the course of the next several weeks, we may check in with other council members or check in with one of the subcommittees. And people should be watching our YouTube channel. We're starting to put more information there, including subcommittee meetings around resiliency. They've been looking at forest integrity. Uh, and doing some panels in the off weeks when, when the full Climate Solutions Caucus isn't meeting. So if you're interested in that, those are only 30 minute meetings. You can, you can check out the, the videos there. We'll make sure a link is up. And as always, thanks everybody for participating. We couldn't do this without uh, robust public support from, from voters and people across the state. <laughs>